Welcome back to our Intermediate Financial Accounting class. In this set of discussions, we're talking about the accounting cycle. In our last one, we talked about the cycle itself and why it's so important that we understand the basics of the accounting cycle as business professionals, whether in accounting or in any other aspect of business. Then we walk through each of the different steps of the accounting cycle, and you can see it right up here. Now, the accounting cycle has all these different pieces, and one of the key things we talked about last time was the fact that each piece flows from one to the other to the other to the other to create a circle that we just go through period after period after period and are able to keep track of what's going on. What we didn't have time for last time was to discuss why. Why do we do this? What's the point of the cycle? So that's what we're going to do this time as we continue with our discussion. And of course we're going to do it with a picture because I think that's the most fun way to actually go through this. So let's talk about the life cycle of a business. Really, it all starts, doesn't it, with an idea. Somebody comes up with a great idea that will make a lot of money, at least that's the goal. Unfortunately, most of the time, the person who comes up with this great idea doesn't have the money to be able to produce the product or, or generate the sales interest or anything else. So they go looking for investors. And they have two options. They can get lenders or they can find owners. Lenders, of course, provide us cash in exchange for us paying that cash with interest back. Owners take a stake in the business so they have some control and some ability to get the extra profits that they hope the business will make. So we go out and we find investors with our great idea, whatever it was, and they give us what we most need. Money. Because that's what we really need in order to make a business grow, is the money. And we take that money and we buy assets with it. So we may build a factory, here's our, our stack there, we'll put in a bank of windows. Or we might buy inventory. but we're basically providing assets to our business. We're turning this cash into these assets. Once we've got assets, of course, then we move on to the next step, and that is selling those assets or those products to make money. So we give our customers our product, our inventory, and they give us, again, what we most want, and that is money back. And every period as we collect that money, we then have to give that money back to our investors, our owners and our lenders. So here's me with a sad face as I give my money either to my debt holders or to my owners. And I'm not usually as sad about this piece because I usually get to keep a little bit of that too because I'm an owner. It was my idea. And that's the idea behind the accounting cycle is we're keeping track of all of the money that came in, keeping track of the way we use it to generate assets, the way we use those assets and that cash to generate sales, and then use those sales proceeds or that profit to give back to our investors and our owners. Now in order to help us with that process, we also came up with a couple of equations. And they're probably equations that you remember very well from your accounting class. They look like this. We want debits to equal our credits. We want our assets to equal our liabilities plus our equity. Now, a lot of people get hung up on these equations, but they're really very straightforward. Debit just means left. Credit just means right. Well, that's just basic math. We gave them clever names, but really it just means the left-hand side has to equal the right-hand side every time. Well, again, makes sense. The other thing here is this major equation. This is the one that we see most often. This assets equals liabilities plus equity. The assets, of course, are the things that we own. Usually they're physical property, like a building or a, a car or a delivery truck or inventory, but they can also be ideas that we own, like a patent or a copyright. They're anything that we have that we can use to make money. Those are our assets. So one way to think about this is that the assets are the things that we own, and the liabilities and equity are how we paid for those assets. Another way to think about it is here's all the assets that we have, who gets what? Because some of those assets are going to have to go back to our debt holders to satisfy our loans, and some of it 
is going to have to go, or gets to go, I should say, to our owners. They get the rest of it. That's it. All the accounting equations come down to this, keeping track of the assets that we own and who gets them, or the assets that we own and how we got the money to pay for them. That's what it's all about. And the accounting cycle and these equations all work together to keep track of the money we got from the investors and how we're generating cash and other assets that can go back to them later on. That's what it's all about. It really is straightforward to do accounting. I should say right here, this again is another key concept. These accounting equations and how they work is a key idea to understanding the accounting cycle. Now, what do we do with these equations? Well, the biggest thing we do is we make sure they always stay in balance. The left-hand side always has to equal the right-hand side, and the assets always have to equal how we paid for them or who paid for them. So we want to make sure everything we do is going to help us to keep these two things in balance. And as long as we do, then we're fulfilling the purpose of accounting and keeping track of things that we should. So let's take a look then at this process in a little bit more detail, see if we can't describe it a little bit better. So again, we have our assets, all the stuff that we own, and that's got to equal our liabilities plus our equity. And we want this to equal. All right, so really, let's put this in here. Who owns the assets? That's this part. So to put this in context, what happens is we have that great idea, remember, and we go to our banker and we explain this fabulous idea that we've had. And he or she gives us money. And now we have cash because the bank gave it to us, right? So this is our banker. And in exchange for the money that he or she gives us, we give them a piece of paper, loan paperwork, that says, yes, we will pay that back to you eventually. And then we go to our owners. That's what we said in our, our idea stage. And we explain the idea to them, or we go into our own pockets and we pull that out. And they also give us money. And in exchange, we give them some kind of a certificate. If it's a public corporation, we give them stock. If it's a sole proprietorship, it's some other piece of paper that says, yes, you own this percentage of our business that we've come up with. And as owning that percentage of the business, then after we pay our debt holders, you get the rest of those assets that we've generated. So right now, that's what we've done. We've gotten all this cash from them, and then we convert that cash, like we said before, into assets. And I'm going to keep this all, we'll keep this easy here. We've got our factory that we're going to build. And we have our inventory that we're going to buy. And if you look at that, nothing has really changed. Nothing overall has changed. Our owners still have claim to a set amount of assets. We just changed those assets from cash into a stack of inventory and a building and computer systems. And all of these assets still belong to those guys. It's just a different form. It's just not cash anymore. It's these other assets. But it belongs to them. And they still get their share of it. The idea here is that when this side goes up, this side has to go up. So that the two sides go up together. If this side goes down, I lose assets, then those investors have to be out somehow. It could be that we paid them back. We have less assets because we gave some money to the owners or we paid off a bunch of debt. But it could be that it went down because, well, we got robbed and a bunch of stuff is gone and, and the debt holders, they're still going to get their money, but the equity holders, man, you're out. You're not going to be able to get as much because we had stuff stolen. And so we looked at that and we said, well, okay, that really makes sense, but we have to keep that other equation in balance, not just assets equal liabilities plus equity. So as one goes up, the other side goes up. As one side goes down, the other side goes down. But we also have to keep track of debits and credits. So we said, great, if it's going to go up on this asset side, let's put up on this side as a debit, left side, remember? And if assets go up, then liabilities and equity have to go up. But since debits have to equal credits, we'll use a credit to show that side going up. Now, assets and liabilities and equity have all gone up. I've done a debit and a credit to keep track of that. Both of my equations are in balance. Cool, huh? All right, well, the other thing is also true. We said, well, what if the assets go down? We'll use a credit to show it going down. Perfect. If that's a credit, 
then this must be a debit. So the two sides stay in balance. And that's what we're trying to do with our debits and our credits. So this side has a debit balance, and this side has a credit balance so that we can keep track. We don't have positive and negative numbers. We have debits versus credits, and it keeps things a lot simpler. All right, we're going to stop there for now. We're going to come back and walk through kind of a simple example that shows this in T-account form so we can see it again. This is a concept I want to make sure we're all comfortable with since it's crucial to everything that comes. So I will see you next time as we continue on with this discussion. See you then.